academic integrity. We'll specifically look at how you avoid plagiarism. The learning outcomes include explain methods of properly crediting work that is taken from other authors and recommend strategies so that you can avoid becoming an accidental plagiarist. As you go through and gather research, you are looking at what other researchers have done before you. There's a quote from Sir Isaac Newton that says, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. In effect, as you research, you're standing on the shoulders of giants. You're building on what others have done before you, rather than having to go and do everything yourself. You're learning from others, and you need to give those giants the proper credit. You can take a look at a short music video about the shoulders of giants at YouTube if you like. Let's look at what plagiarism is. If you take part of someone else's work, you have stolen it, you have plagiarized, just as if you had taken their computer or their phone or their jewelry. You must give credit to others if you take some, all, or part of their work, or if you use their ideas as you develop your paper. If you only make small changes, a word here or there, you may still be guilty of plagiarism. This cartoon is is a funny look at plagiarism. I do not believe most graduate students who are in this course, in this program, would be copying something straight off the internet. I believe that most graduate students, if they plagiarize, they are accidental plagiarists. It doesn't matter, however, if you did it accidentally or on purpose. Is similar to ignorance of the law is no excuse. If you violated a law that you didn't know about, it's not, it's not a defense. If you plagiarize and didn't intend to, it doesn't matter. You have harmed someone else by taking something that is not yours. If we look at this graphic, it gives us a way to very clearly, very simply, understand plagiarism. Obviously, if you turn in someone else's work as your own, you've plagiarized. If you submit a paper that you bought online, you've plagiarized. If you paraphrase a source and don't cite, you've plagiarized. You must give credit if you take information, ideas, or direct quotes from another source. If you read multiple papers and then summarize them in your own words without credit, you've plagiarized. If, however, you read the literature on your topic, you understand it, you make notes, you get ideas, and you write in your own thoughts your own voice comes through and you cite as needed throughout to very explicitly identify the information that was not your own. Then you have not plagiarized, you've created a, a good research paper, you've developed, you've expanded upon what others have said, or you've summarized what others have said, bringing together a variety of sources that are properly cited. There are many reasons that students plagiarize. Probably the most common reason any student or any graduate student plagiarizes is time. They do not have time. They wait until the last minute like we all tend to do. 
I like to call that the just-in-time model. I do it just in time, right before it's due. A research paper, you can't do that. You've got to gradually build it over time, let the ideas sit so you can reflect upon them, think about them, and decide what you want to present. So time management is key. I think most graduate students, as I said, do not intend to plagiarize, but it doesn't matter. You may be concerned you're not going to get as good of a grade as you would like, therefore you plagiarize. It's typically very obvious when someone plagiarizes because you're reading along and it's a normal graduate student writing. All of a sudden a Harvard professor starts writing, it's a very different tone, a very different voice, and then it goes back to the student writer. Resources such as Turnitin have made the, the odds that you're going to get caught plagiarizing even greater. The, the potential for a good grade in a class is not worth ruining your academic record at an institution. Many other reasons that students plagiarize, you've got to plan properly so that you don't plagiarize. We must give credit to those who came before us, the giants upon whose shoulders we are building. If it's a quote, you copied everything exactly, you put it in quotation marks, or if it's a long quote, you followed APA formatting or whatever formatting guidelines, the style guidelines you use, and then you cite it. Avoid using quotations unless they're compelling. You can't say it better yourself. I regret that I have only one life to give for my country. I can't really say that better than it was said at the time. So you only use direct quotes that are compelling. You enclose them in quotation marks unless your style guide says otherwise, and you cite it at the end. More often, I'm going to be paraphrasing or summarizing, which we'll talk about next. Very few quotations. Paraphrasing, though, I put the ideas of a passage of text into my own words. I still have to cite it, but they're my words. They're my words summarizing the idea that someone else used in their paper. With paraphrasing, you must cite at the end, just like you do with quotations. Typically, what I do with paraphrasing, I read the article. I may make notes or make a few pointers or highlight a portion that's important to me, then I put the article aside after I've read it maybe a couple of times. I put the article aside and I then write my, the ideas in my own words without referring to the article. Then I know I didn't use the words of the author, I'm using my own words. Still must cite it. Summarizing, you read an article or a group of articles and you summarize all of them, a larger portion. You still have to cite it. I use the same strategy as with paraphrasing. I read the article or articles or papers or whatever it is that I'm reading, uh, newspaper articles. I put them aside or it aside and I write in my own words. Then I know I'm using my own words. I still cite at the end. A few examples of things you don't want to do. You can't copy from a website such as Wikipedia or any other website. Even valid websites you cannot copy from without giving credit. Copying from a magazine, a journal, or a newspaper. You can't do that without, or a blog without giving credit. Copying from a book, whether it's an ebook or a, a hardback book, you cannot do that without giving credit. Copying someone else's work is obviously not your work, you're stealing their work. Any form of copying and pasting without proper citation. 
rewording, summarizing, paraphrasing someone else and not giving credit for those ideas that are not your own. The giants upon whose shoulders you have built. Not putting quotation marks around a direct quote. Not including citations or making them incorrect, perhaps to mislead so someone can't go and pull that article and see the exact words you copied. Buying an essay online, turning it in as your own egregious form of plagiarism in that case. Using a previously written essay from one class in another class. If you plan to use the same topic as you used in another class, you must get prior permission from the professor. Even if you're going to take a different perspective or going to put it in the proper format for this professor, you must get per permission to reuse. Now, if you're going to reuse a general idea, but take a different approach, that's okay, but you need to get permission from the instructor first. You're, otherwise, you're self-plagiarizing, which is a form of plagiarism. Using a photo, a graphic of some sort without giving the source credit. Typically, in, in the short papers that you write for my class, I say don't use a graphic unless you create it yourself. You have a short paper, if you put a graphic in this half a page, that's simply too much of this not your own work. You may use graphics that are in Creative Commons, they're licensed, many of them will allow you to use their graphics as much as you want, as long as it's non-commercial use and as long as you give the attribution that they want. If you're using clip art in a presentation and it's PowerPoint developed clip art included with your program, with your license to use Office, that's probably fine. Otherwise, you want to make sure you've got the copyright. Many of the graphics in this presentation have Creative Commons licenses that I've included on the page. But generally, with a short paper, don't include someone else's artwork, photo, graphic, only include your work. To avoid plagiarism, you want to make sure there's not even a question. There are many online tools that will let you run your paper through and see if there are any issues prior to submission. Most professors use Turnitin through the class, but you want to make sure you, you haven't plagiarized prior to submitting it in your class. So follow the guidelines, make sure what's your information, your ideas, what's not your ideas are properly credited to those whose ideas you, you have taken. So identify what's your voice, what your ideas are, and identify what is not your idea by giving credit to the source. Please don't wait until the last minute. This is probably the number one reason people end up plagiarizing. If you have a group project and one of your five group members plagiarizes at the end and you don't have time to fix it, don't submit that section. If you submit plagiarized work as part of a group with your name on it, you have plagiarized. You are responsible. You need to get your work completed in advance so that there's no problem with anybody's section. I had a group one time, the day that it was due, they came to me and said we're only turning in four of our five sections because the fifth section was plagiarized. We gave it back to him to rewrite. He only got it to us today, shortly before the due date. It was plagiarized, we removed it. They took the penalty from the assignment rather than taking the penalty from plagiarism. Get help. Ask questions of your teacher, of others, any resources you have. You may have a writing center or some other help resource, online resources. The main thing is give credit to others if it's their idea or their direct quotes. 
if it's your idea you, or your voice coming through and you're not paraphrasing, summarizing, or quoting, then you don't need to reference it. You can take a look at this Avoiding Accidental Plagiarism video on YouTube. While we're going through and looking at plagiarism, we're really talking about being a professional, moral, ethical, legal scholar. We are part of the academic community. We're following the guidelines that are established. You may say, why is that important? Maybe I get away with it, and maybe you do. And if you do, there's no harm, no foul. The professor may not know, and and if, if it wasn't caught, then good for you. You didn't get a lot from the course, but you don't get a penalty. However, if you are caught, the penalty is so high, it could get you dismissed from the university. Don't allow this to happen. You may go through a student conduct review at KSU. You may fail the course. You may fail the assignment. Take a zero on the assignment rather than plagiarizing, even if you fail the course. If it's your first offense at KSU and it's not egregious, then you may not get dismissed, but it will go on your permanent record like you hear about in K through 12. This goes on your permanent academic record. And if top secret clearance is sought at a later date and they come and check your academic record, this would come up. This doesn't necessarily preclude you from getting that top secret clearance, but it would be reported, even first offense. Typically a second offense at KSU at least, you're dismissed from the university. It's over. Don't allow this to happen, either first or second offense. It's not worth it. Some guidelines to follow. Whose ideas am I using? If they're my ideas, I don't have to cite it. If they're ideas I've taken from someone else, I have to cite it. Whose words am I using? If they're my words, I still have to cite if the ideas are from someone else. If the words are actually another person's, then I've got to put it in quotation marks and still cite it. What about pictures? As I mentioned, if they're available under Creative Commons license or public domain, you follow the guidelines for that particular copyright and cite as necessary. If it's not available, you need to obtain permission to use in most cases. To summarize, your paper is stronger when you build upon the shoulders of giants. You use research from other authors to help you build, develop, refine, and expand your own ideas. You may and should paraphrase, quote, summarize throughout, but you must cite the ideas or the words that are not your own. Only use compelling quotes that you cannot summarize better or in different words yourself. You have to use inline text citations for APA format. Some others may use footnotes. Whatever it is, you must properly reference the, the source where you gained the material. Finally, don't become an accidental plagiarist. Manage your time wisely. Explicitly note what is your own idea and what is someone else's idea. Properly cite. Develop your research paper. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Get help as needed. And don't become an accidental plagiarist. You can take a look at this video for more information.